The Hubble Space Telescope has measured the biggest ice common nucleus astronomers have ever observed. The diameter is reported to be around 80 miles, making it larger than Rhode Island. The nucleus is approximately 50 times larger than the average comet's core. Its mass is predicted to be 500 quadrillion tons, which is 100,000 times that of a typical comet discovered much closer to the Sun. From the boundary of the solar system, the massive comet C-2014 UN271, the Bernardinelli Bernstein is hurtling towards us at 22,000 miles per hour. But have no fear, it'll never go closer to the Sun than 1 billion miles, which is somewhat further than the distance between Saturn and the Sun, and it will not occur until 2031. Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. Today we'll be looking at NASA just detected several massive objects entering our solar system. Yeah, you heard it right. Comet C-2002 VQ-94 with an estimated 60-mile-wide nucleus held the previous record. The Lincoln Near-Earth Asteroid Research Linear project detected in 2002. David Jewett, a professor of planetary science and astronomy at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, and co-author of a new study published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters, said, This comet is literally the tip of the iceberg for many thousands of comets that are too faint to see in the more distant parts of the solar system. We have always assumed that this comet must be enormous because it is so dazzling from such a great distance away. Now we confirm it is the case. Pedro Bernardinelli and Gary Bernstein identify the comet C-2014 UN-271 using archived pictures from the Dark Energy Survey at the Cerro Tololo Inter-American Observatory in Chile. It was first discovered by accident in November 2010 when it was a staggering 3 billion miles from the Sun, which is almost the distance to Neptune. Since then, it has been thoroughly examined by both terrestrial and astronomical telescopes. The paper's primary author, Manto Hui, of the Macau University of Science and Technology in Taipa, Macau, remarked, This is a remarkable item. Given how active it is despite its distance from the Sun, we suspected that the comet would be quite large, and we required the most accurate data to confirm this. On January 8, 2022, his team utilized Hubble to capture five images of the comet. The difficulty in measuring this comet was distinguishing the solid nucleus from the enormous dusty coma that surrounded it. Hubble cannot yet resolve the comet's nucleus optically due to the distance. Instead, the Hubble measurements indicate a brilliant spike of light at the side of the nucleus. We and his team then created a computer model of the surrounding coma and then modified it to respond with the Hubble photos. Then, the coma's brilliance was removed, leaving only the star-like nucleus. We and his team compared the luminosity of the nucleus to the previous radio observations made with the Atacama Large Millimeter and Submillimeter Array, the ALMA, in Chile. This combined data constrains the nucleus's dimensions and reflectivity. The new Hubble findings are comparable to previous ALMA's size estimates, but strongly suggest that the nucleus surface is darker than previously believed. It is enormous and as dark as a coal, Jewett stated. Since almost a million years ago, the comet has been approaching the Sun. It originates from the Oort Cloud, the believed nesting site of billions of comets. The inner border of the diffuse cloud is believed to be 2,000 to 5,000 times the distance between the Sun and the Earth. Its outer border may extend at least a fourth of the way to the Alpha Centauri system, the nearest star system to our Sun. The Oort Cloud's comets did not originate that distant from the Sun, rather, they were expelled from the solar system billions of years ago by a gravitational pinball game between the huge outer planets, while Jupiter and Saturn's orbits were still evolving. The distant comets will only return to the suns and planets if their orbits are protruded by the gravitational pull of a passing star, similar to shaking apples from a tree. Comet Bernardinelli Bernstein has a 3 million year elliptical orbit that takes it approximately half a light year from the sun. Now less than 2 billion miles from the sun, the comet is plummeting nearly perpendicular to the solar system's plane. The temperature at the distance is around 348 degrees Fahrenheit. However, this temperature is sufficient for carbon monoxide to sublimate from the surface and form the dusty coma. Comet Bernardinelli Bernstein is a crucial indicator of the size distribution of comets in the Oort cloud and consequently its total mass. The mass of the Oort cloud is estimated to be as much as 20 times that of the Earth. The Oort cloud, which was first postulated in 1950 by Dutch astronomer Jan Oort, remains a theory since the numerous comets that compose it are too weak and distant to be directly viewed. 
Ironically, this means that the greatest structure in the solar system is virtually unnoticeable. NASA's Voyager probes are not expected to reach the inner region of the Oort cloud for another 300 years, and it might take up to 30,000 years to transit through it. Arriving comets that can be tracked to this nesting location provide circumstantial proof. They approach the sun from various directions, requiring the cloud to be spherical. These comets are retained for billions of years as samples of the composition of the early solar system. The Oort cloud's existence is supported by theoretical models of the genesis and evolution of the solar system. Astronomers will have a better understanding of the Oort cloud's involvement in the formation of the solar system if they can collect more observational evidence through deep sky surveys and multi-wavelength observations. NASA and ESA are international partners in the Hubble Space Telescope Project, the European Space Agency. The telescope is managed by NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. In Baltimore, Maryland, the Space Telescope Science Institute STSCL, handles Hubble's science operations. The Association of Universities for Research and Astronomy in Washington, D.C. operates STSCL for NASA. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so that you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Stay tuned, and we'll catch you in the next video.